Hello and welcome to our daily service. The Christian message is an amazing message of wonderful grace. Despite the way in which we keep turning away from God, he keeps on turning towards us in love and he invites us to call him Father. Some words from John's first letter in the New Testament. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. Loving Father, we are amazed by this love. We deserve nothing but to be banished from your presence and yet you shower us with love and you invite us to call you Father. May we never take this for granted. And we pray today in these brief moments, delight us again with this truth that it might change our lives for the glory of your name. Amen. In a very moving passage, the prophet Hosea gives us a window into the heart of God. In his justice, he must punish Israel. And yet in his love, he longs to forgive because they're his child. And here's a tension that is only resolved in the New Testament with the cross of Christ. Let's say together these words from Hosea chapter 11. When Israel was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt I called my son. But the more they were called, the more they went away from me. They sacrificed to the Baals, and they burned incense to images. It was I who taught Ephraim to walk, taking them by the arms, but they did not realise it was I who healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with ties of love. To them I was like one who lifts a little child to the cheek, and I bent down to feed them. Will they not return to Egypt, and will not Assyria rule over them, because they refuse to repent? A sword will flash in their cities, it will devour their false prophets, and put an end to their plans. My people are determined to turn from me, even though they call me God Most High, I will by no means exalt them. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, Israel? How can I treat you like Adma? How can I make you like Zeboim? My heart is changed within me. All my compassion is aroused. We're continuing today with the story of the prodigal son. And we've seen how the son, after asking for his inheritance, leaves home and he sinks very low indeed. But then he comes to his senses and he decides to return home. We continue with the story. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms round him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. It must have been an anxious journey. As he imagined that meeting with his father... And he saw in his mind his angry, disapproving look. And he rehearsed his speech, I imagine, over and over again. Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Father. Far away. We can imagine perhaps on a hill. His father with binoculars in hand, he's scouring the countryside, trying to look for his son. He's often been there before. His friends told him he should have given up long ago, but love never tires. And then he can just make out in the distance a speck. It gradually gets bigger and bigger. It's the figure of a man 
Oh, how different from the boy who left a long, long time ago. It seems like that now, anyway. It's the figure of a man who's prematurely old, with sunken cheeks and emaciated form. He's limping slowly along. Could it be? Could it be? And those old eyes, though dim with age, are sharp with love. And the father cries out, My son! My son! The aged feet forget their feebleness. The old man runs and wraps the boy in his arms, smothers him with kisses. And the boy begins to stammer out his speech, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. And the dad says, That's enough. It's not the time for speeches. And as they get closer to the home, he cries out to the servants, Get some new clothes! Get a the table ready, we're going to have a party, because this son of mine was dead and is alive again, was lost and is found. It's a wonderful picture of the loving, gracious heart of God. I don't know you, but I know myself. I know the kind of things that I've said and thought and done in my life, and I know that if there's a God who is a God who cares about right and wrong, a God of justice. I don't deserve to be in his family, not at all. But God is a God of amazing love. And he longs to have people who are lost, people who've wandered away from him and often sunk very low indeed. He longs to have them back in his family and he sent his son to make it possible as he died to take the penalty for them. It is a story of amazing grace. And it, and it just may be that you've never really understood this for yourself before. And you're still a long way from home. And the message of this story is, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you've done, there's hope for you. God is a God of grace. Come home. He offers forgiveness in Christ. And for the rest of us, I guess most of us who are watching this, we know these things very well. But do we still delight in them? And have we received this amazing news that whatever we've done, if we've trusted in Christ, it's been forgiven? Let's not keep dragging it up. God doesn't. He's accepted us as his children. And as we delight in this message ourselves, surely we'll want to share it with others. We'll long that everyone else would receive this grace. And we won't be like the older son who, as we'll see tomorrow, resents the grace that his father shows to this reprobate, the prodigal younger son. Well, more of that tomorrow. But for now, let's express our trust in this wonderful God, in these words which we'll say together. We trust in God the Father, who has revealed his love and kindness to us, and in his mercy saved us, not for any good deed of our own, but because he is merciful. We trust in Jesus Christ, who gave himself up for us to free us from our sin, and set us apart for himself, a people eager to do good. We trust in the Holy Spirit, whom God poured out on us generously through Christ our Saviour, so that justified by grace, we might become heirs with the hope of eternal life. Amen. Let's turn to God in prayer. We'll have a moment of silence as we bring our own prayers to God for ourselves and for others we're concerned about. Heavenly Father, our ever present help in trouble, our fortress and our God. Calm the anxious fears of all who turn to you. Give strength and healing to those who are sick, and courage and skill to those who care for them. Grant wisdom and clarity to those in authority, and humble us all to call upon you, that we may be saved not only in this life, but also for that which is to come, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect 
for last Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth, to the glory of your name, through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our song very much fits the theme of today's service. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast, beyond all measure. Grace, undeserved love, is right at the heart of the Christian message. It's a wonderful message. May you be strengthened with that truth as you go into today. Let's close by saying together the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.